Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We have another unboxing video for you today. Uh, this is also something I didn't necessarily expect to be buying. Uh, it was kickstarted and I was just not able to get in on the Kickstarter at the time. What we have is Edgar Rice Burroughs, John Carter of Mars, the RPG. Now back in the day, I was a huge fan of these books. Uh, there was never an RPG to support that. Um, in an effort to get something like that experience, uh, if you recall the old John Carter board game from SPI, designed by Mark Herman, uh, interestingly enough. I owned that at one point, and it's something I really kind of wish I still had, just so I could take a look at that Mark Herman design in particular these days. Uh, but what we have here is uh, the new RPG from Modifius. I, I want to call it Modifius. And this is the fancy schmancy slip-cased version. Now we're going to take our time going through this because I have never seen the inside of these books. Um, we have, I don't know who the artist is here, but whoever it is, they're really, really good. Um, this is the slipcase, but these are landscape format books, but the slipcase actually will stand up like this. Um, which is interesting uh, and and cool because this way I can put them on my shelf like this and the books actually slide out the top. So we will bust these open. I don't, I've never historically been a big fan of slipcase editions, uh, but lately I've been kind of getting into them for various things. So plastic's off again. I uh, got a nice feel to it. Uh, it's not unduly marred by like trademark stuff or anything like that. I mean, there's like a trademark on the logo, but there's not like a massive text block on the back or anything like that of the slipcase. So this contains two books. There is also, as far as I know, it's the only other thing that's out. Uh, there is a narrator's toolkit, um, which I don't know a ton about. So uh, but that does not come with the slipcase. So let me just check my framing here because I want to get as much as possible in the frame. So, uh, so again, we have landscape format books, which is a weird choice and actually caused me to hesitate on this. Um, and maybe, maybe I'm past my prime on this material because uh, I haven't read this in a long time. Actually, that's not really true. I actually reread the first three books when the movie came out. I liked the movie, by the way. Um, and I think it's too bad that uh, we did not get more of them. Uh, because Disney decided that they wanted to make the previous CEO look bad. Uh, so we have a map of Barsoom in the end papers here. Uh, here's the whole solar system with Barsoom, Jasoom is Earth, uh, Luna, because I think Burroughs never said what the moon's name was, Rasoom is Mercury, and Kosum I presume to be Venus. And there's more. If we look at the back, we have the rest of the map. Circumference of Barsoom, 360 Korads. That's pretty cool. Uh, Burroughs was very much a come up with uh, uh, tons of arcane vocabulary uh, for uh, for the books. So, line development, Jack Norris and Ben Graybeaton. And rules development, Ben Graybeaton. And developed from the additional 2D20 designed by Jay Little for Mutant Chronicles. Now, let me talk about the system. Because there are special dice available. Well, there are dice available for this. There's a, there's a helium set, a Zodanga set, and a Thark set. And they are just regular polyhedral dice. You do not need specialty dice for this. Uh, that's something that I don't like. Um, I will deal with fate dice um, for fate and fudge games, um, but beyond that, um, I would just as soon be able to use my vast di existing dice collection instead of buying more dice. Not that I won't buy more dice. Um, but I like everybody at the table to have their own dice. I don't want people touching my dice with their greasy fingers. And then I, what do I have to buy the special dice for the game for everybody? No, I, I think that's ludicrous. Um, so we have here a table of contents. Super small print on this, by the way. Um, how many pages is this thing? Looks like roughly 280 pages. There's a glossary at the back, too. Uh, welcome to Barsoom, who was Edgar Rice Burroughs, John Carter, and the Bar Barsoom novels. Uh, we have uh, Jack Norris's introduction. I know Jack online uh, casually, so a neat guy. I uh, can't r really was looking forward to this, and I just didn't make. Be, I just didn't have the money, frankly, to, to swing the Kickstarter when it was up. Which is the difficulty with the Kickstarter is is I got to come up with a giant pile of money within 30 days, and it's hard for me to plan around that. 
Um, so this 2D20 system is sort of a cinematic-y type system, but it's not really like a narrativist system, I wouldn't say. Um, it also uses, uh, that system is also used in their Conan game, Modiphius's Conan game, and in Mutant Chronicles. Um, which, to be blunt, I have never, it's been a, it's a property that's been a long, uh, around a long time, and I've never been remotely interested in it. I, though I think I did play the Mutant Chronicles collectible card game back in the day, and that was actually alright. Um, alright, so we have Barsoomian Distances, and Barsoomian Time, um, and a brief glossary here. So I don't know very much about the system either, other than that it's narrativist and you roll 2d20s. Um, so this game is intended to allow you to play in any one of three different eras. Uh, but they're all different eras based on what John Carter's doing at the time. So the Dotar Sojat era, when he's with the Tharks. The Prince of Helium, when he's with, um, with Helium, but before he goes back to Earth for ten years, or whatever it was. Uh, and the Jeddak of Jeddak era, where... Uh, the Jeddak of Jeddak's era, when he com John Carter comes back to Barsoom and has some adventures and becomes the Jeddak of Jeddaks. Um, so section one, creating your character. and uh, Okay, so section one has two chapters. And they, they talk about the three eras here. There's a second book with this thing, by the way. I'm going to blow through this as quickly as possible. This is not going to be a serious rules overview or anything. If somebody would like to see a rules analysis of this, by all means, pipe up in the comments. Um, playing John Carter and friends, so they at least talk about that. I think the notional thing is that you uh, uh, make your own characters. Uh, looks like there are stats, there are races, which include Green Martians, Red Martians, Earthborn, uh, Firstborn, and the Okar. Uh, here's Red Martians. And they really made them red, which I kind of like. They didn't make them look like Native Americans. Uh, I really like the way they did the Tharks. I really like the way they did the Green Martians in the movie, too. Frankly, the Okar, these are the yellow people, uh, and the Earthborn, and they all get bonuses and stuff, and the Firstborn, the, the Black Barsoomians. Uh, we have archetypes, which, uh, to what extent these resemble classes, I couldn't say. We have the Airship Officer, the Assassin, the Beastmaster, the Duelist, the Envoy, the Explorer, the Fugitive, Gladiator, Guide, Healer, Panthen, what is a Panthen? Panthen is a mercenary. Um, a rogue, scientist, soldier, and spy. So there are no skills. Competency is presumed in John Carter, which is fair, given the source material. Uh, we get descriptors. Uh, I'd be very interested to dig into this system and take a look at it. It looks very interesting. Uh, we have some notes on names. Uh, we have advanced player characters. I always like to see this if you want, if you want to start a game with characters who aren't rubes. Uh, there is a cloth bookmark here, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, we have some sample PCs. So we have some kind of stress system. Confusion, fear, and injury. I'd be curious to see how that works. Uh, bold Earthborn Soldier, Canny Red Martian Envoy, Stalwart Red Martian Duelist, Charming Okar Spy, Driven Firstborn Airship Officer, Thoughtful Green Martian Guide. So that, that goes with yours. So you pick the descriptor, the race, and the archetype. And that's kind of your together represents sort of, sort of a class. Uh, here are talents. Um, what are talents? Uh, looks like you pick off a list, pretty much. Um, which is fine. Uh, but it does give you some guidelines how to design them as well. Multiple effect talents. So here's the fancy Zodanga dice, uh, and I've I've seen the pictures of the dice. They they do look nice, uh, but they're just regular polyhedral dice. They're not like special dice with special icons. Section two: Adventuring weapons, technology, and equipment. Um, and chapter six: Growing your legend. Would actually be sort of interesting to go outside those eras. But they, I think they discussed that in this. It's in some of the the the, the I think the, their blog mentioned this, where nothing really happens unless John Carter is around for it to happen. So you could very easily take Barsoom at the state that it was in at the time that John Carter first showed up in the eighteen sixties or seventies or whatever that was, um, and extrapolate backwards to, you know, 
early Victorian times or even the Middle Ages. Um, or even, you know, ancient Romans deposited on Barsoom. And maybe the, the, the Barsoomians have simply forgotten that those heroes of Barsoom from 1800 years ago weren't actually native to Barsoom. They've, all, they've claimed them as their own. I think that's not particularly unreasonable. So I always like to get a sense of how long the combat rules are. And it looks like we have 63. This all the combat rules. 63 to 67. Do we really have four pages of combat rules? Uh, I would be not displeased if that turned out to be the case. Not really. It's kind of spread around in this whole thing. Threat. Okay, so there's some kind of momentum and threat system here, and I don't know how that works. I'm very curious to understand how that works. Hopefully the book does a good job of explaining it. Um, one, another thing that annoys me about a number of indie RPGs, but not all of them, is that they never really explain how those rules get used. So if you happen not to be familiar with indie RPG conventions, then you're baffled as to how you use those rules. Uh, games that I can think of that uh, were susceptible to this include Burning Wheel, which is a game I like a lot. Uh, and Torchbearer, which I have, and which tells you flatly, oh, you're not going to understand the rules by uh, reading the rules. Um, well, maybe you should write the rules better, then, is my position there. So hopefully this book does a better job. Uh, I will be perusing this in detail over the next few days. Um, I don't want to go through the entire book page by page. Ah, here we go. Here's the uh, here's the world section. Section 3, History of Barsoom, the Green Hordes, the Red Kingdoms, Okar, and Beyond. And Chapter 10, Beyond Barsoom. Uh, that's cool. Uh, in the last John Carter book that appeared under the byline of Edgar Rice Burroughs, which is called John Carter of Mars, uh, one of the stories is um, he has to fight the skeleton men of Jupiter. And uh, word seems to be that uh, he didn't actually write that. That was written by somebody else because it's not very good. Um, and if you haven't read Edgar Rice Burroughs, by the way, I, I would encourage you to do so. I mean, it, many things about Burroughs' writing are very dated. Um, his take on gender, for example, is is quite Victorian. Um, but uh, there, there's those books actually still hold. And I'm talking specifically about the John Carter books and the Tarzan books. Um, not the Venus books or the, the At the Earth core so much, uh, but the first two Tarzan volumes, which are kind of one novel together, um, is surprisingly good. Uh, I was very surprised that it was as good as it was. Um, and I didn't read all 30 or whatever it was uh, Tarzan books, but uh, I read all the John Carter of Mars books because that was my thing. So here's the three eras again and John Carter's status in each of them. So it looks like we get a fair amount of detail here. Um, and the book's very pretty. It's not what I would call... I mean, there isn't an illustration on every page, but almost every two-page spread has either an illustration or a sidebar of some kind. Um, here's Okar, the polar regions. Uh, that's where the yellow Martians live. Barsoom's furthest reaches with the Therns, uh, who are much more prominent in the movie than they were in the first two books, I think. Uh, definitely the first book in which they are mentioned. Uh, Beyond Barsoom, uh, this talks about Earth timelines, I'd be very curious to read that. Um, Earth's moon is believed by most to be uninhabited. However, there are rumors of hidden inhabitants on Jasum's nearest celestial, celestial neighbor, totalitarian regimes seeking to rule the moon and other threats. Whether these are true is unknown, but perhaps some future exploration from Jessum or Barsoom may reveal the truth of the matter. Um, so, they actually mention the Venus books here. Uh, Carson Napier shows up on Venus, which is, of course, sort of a jungle planet in that. Uh, Mercury, they mention Jupiter. Um, Sassum, the planet is ruled by the Mogors, also known as the Skeleton Men due to their skeletal appearance. Um, so, we have here the Game Mastering chapter. Very interested to see this. Very interested to see, not for the general advice so much, but what they have specifically to say about uh, employing these mechanics. So he talks about setting up a campaign. Um, wait, but they are not stupid? 
Okay, the villains are not stupid. I was I thought they were talking about the players for a second. Um, curse your sudden and inevitable betrayal. Sources of inspiration. Okay, so this is interesting. Um, Burroughs' works, myths and legends, literature, uh, cinema, the works of Georges Méliès, uh, particularly A Trip to the Moon and The Impossible Voyage, have fantastic storylines and vivid visuals that could easily be reimagined in a Barsoomian context. That's actually absolutely true. Um, here is the bestiary. Looks like we're getting uh, a page or two on each thing. Not a very uh, space... Um, efficient stat block, but it doesn't look like there's much more to the stat block than that either, so I think that's actually probably fine. Plant Men, uh, the Sith, much predates the Star Wars Sith, I might add. The Synthetic Men, the Hormads. Um, Burroughs was kind of hit and miss with his names, to be honest about it. I mean, he was he, he had a consistent naming style, and it, it ended up working. Um, but it's idiosyncratic. Uh, Secrets of Barsoom. Okay, so this is stuff that you would know, I assume, if you had read the books. Bantum. What the hell is Bantum? The land of the Chaldeans. A series of fertile valleys and low hills populated by roaming banths. There are fertile valleys on Barsoom? I wasn't sure that that was actually the case. Strange Powers and Secrets. Strange and Lost Technology. That's interesting. Champions of Barsoom. Uh, so this is the character. So here we have John Carter, who I will assume to be the most baddest dude around. Um, not sure I'm seeing the, the outfit there, to be honest about it. That looks basically okay. That, not so much. Uh, I thought they did a really good job with that actress... Uh, Who's Lynn Collins played her in, played Deja Thoris in the movie and totally pulled off the most beautiful woman of two worlds in my opinion. Um, Morris Kajak, the Jed of Helium. Tardos Moors, the Jeddak of Helium. This is Deja Thoris' grandfather. Tars Tarkas, one of my favorite characters from the books. Uh, Carthoris, who is the son of John Carter and Deja Thoris. Uh, Issus, the, the, the death goddess. Matai Shang, uh, one of the Therns. Zodar, Dator of the Firstborn. Here's Tara, the daughter of John Carter. Uh, and these are actually done by uh, Era, too, which is kind of cool. Ulysses Paxton, who was another Earthman, uh, also a soldier, I think during the First World War, that, uh, that also got transported to Mars. Uh, here are character archetypes. I always like to see this, too, so you can like just bust these out if you need. Oh, I, crap, I need the stats for this guy. We just look them up instead of having to play it by ear if you're not hugely familiar with the system. So backer characters. Okay, so I guess if you backed the game to a certain extent, you got to design characters. Savage Zodangan Assassin. Uh, sardonic Earthborn with love of history, who looks like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. More Genzel, the obsessive Holy Thern. Raz Omask. Brilliant Red Martian Scientist. Solus Real. Ryle. Ryle, I think. Who cares? I mean, you pronounce the stuff how you think it sounds cool. I'm not going to get hung up on that kind of thing. Unless there is an actual verbal record somewhere that's commonly accessible. Here's the adventure, uh, which I'm just going to flip through super fast. Just to kind of get a sense of how much there is to it. Uh, looks like not a ton. Uh, but what you should have is, uh, oh, and here's some, uh, seeds for future adventures, which is cool. <coughs> and here's character sheets. These are interesting. Uh, they look nice. Um, not hugely readable. Would like to see them in black and white so you could, uh, actually <coughs> photocopy them. Um, here's glossary of game terms, as I guess opposed to the brief glossary that we got uh, at the beginning. And then an index. I always like to see an index. This is not a super promising index for a book this size, <coughs> although the print is really small. Okay, so that's the core rules book. Again, in this 
uh, sort of goofy landscape format, which I think I can live with, uh, especially because uh, it goes in the not landscape slipcase. So putting those aside, there is a second book, Phantoms of Mars Campaign Guide. So this is a campaign. Um, we have here the same map of um, Barsoom. Uh, line development, same folks. Uh, rules development, Ben Graybeaton. Uh, does this contain the miniatures rules? There are miniatures rules for this. Where you get the miniatures if you weren't part of the Kickstarter, don't ask me. I have no idea. So that's chap chapter 5 here. Now this is a 128-page book, looks like, roughly. Uh, 120, looks like. So we have a cast of characters, uh, and we have five chapters, which are far more uh, detailed than the ones in the... than the ones in the starter adventure in the book. I always like to see a starter adventure in the book, even though uh, I really feel like I seldom use them. Um, but what it can do is give you some insight into how the game is actually played. So here's the adventure. So this I'm just going to briefly flip through, and maybe I'll flip back to the miniatures rules. Again... 2d20 skirmish rules. So I guess you could use this for the 2d20 system in general, maybe, which means you could use them for their Conan game. Um, and your set of John Carter miniatures. Again, I don't know where where you get those. I haven't seen them anywhere. Um, the miniatures do look pretty good. <coughs> they do look inspired... <coughs> by the film to some extent, but I, I don't care. That's fine. I like the movie. So, Martian Flyers. There's some s different stat blocks for uh, much more efficient stat blocks, no less. Uh, for specific characters as well. Uh, haven't really done anything with miniatures in a long time, like many years, um, and I'm resistant to doing so because um, it's like a whole other hobby. So, Fall of the Eidolon. Well, I guess we, we knew that, so I didn't really spoil anything here. So, uh, the whole set is, is really very nice. Um, obviously, I'm not in a position to review this. This was literally my first flip-through of this material. Uh, but it looks nice, and from a, a brief glance, thank you, neighbor, um, from a brief glance, it looks like the mechanics may be interesting in a number of ways. So... Uh, there's an narrator's toolkit for this. If anybody wants to see an unboxing of that, please pipe up in the comments. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please uh, subscribe to the channel and like the video and comment. If you have any questions about this, you want to know something specifically, go ahead and ask. I'll be happy to answer to the best of my ability. If you want to see more uh, video content on this product line, also say something. Um, there will be a channel update. Uh, I'm planning that as I record this. It is April 23rd of 2019. Uh, vi this video won't be out for a couple of days. Next week, last week of April 2019, I will have a channel update video uh, just as we go into May, talking about what's going to go on with the channel. Uh, I've got plans. I've always got big plans. We'll see. We'll see what comes through. But hey, you know, I'm ahead of the game for this week at least. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time and have a good time.